Okay, here's the financial transaction that we'd like to track. Uh, the Jacksons uh, bought a house. It's a $2,600,000 home. They originally financed it at 6.25%. So we, we want to, to show how that payment is figured out. Once that's figured out, then partway through the loan, they change and refinance and so we want to track these transactions. So, the, so we're interested in showing our work and, and demonstrating the understanding that's needed to follow uh, these transactions. So let's imagine that the Jacksons don't make any payment at all until the very end of the 30 years. Then, of course, this money is going to be compounding interest during those 30 years and would like to identify how much they would owe if they only make one payment at the end of 30 years. Well, that's a compound interest problem, so we're using the compound interest formula. I just corrected a typo here. So we're using the compound interest formula, take that 2600 the take that uh, $260,000 and see what it's like with compound interest compounded monthly for 30 years. And so let's do this calculation. Today I'm going to do the calculations in a spreadsheet, so I want to be calculating the payment on 2600 uh, oops. Uh, calculating the payment on uh, $260,000 mortgage that's, being, that's charging 6.25% uh, APR. So the principal is the $260,000. The annual interest rate is 6.25%. Uh, so the, the monthly uh, <clears throat> so the, the monthly interest rate is going to be that So that uh, monthly interest rate is going to, to be this amount right here, the B3, I'm sorry, uh, B3 uh, divided by 12. Now that's this amount right here. I'm just calling that I in my spreadsheet. So now we've got all the pieces to do this calculation. So the amount owed in 30 years is going to be equal to that principal times 1 plus that I uh, close the parentheses and raise that part in the parentheses to the 360th power because there's 360 uh, periods in this. Okay, that's a chunk of money. That's over a million and a half dollars. Now in the spreadsheet calculation there were fractions of a penny on here. We've rounded the, that up. So if, if we made only one payment at the end of 30 years, then we would owe uh, over a million and a half dollars uh, on that house. What we're going to do is set up a sinking fund to pay off this amount at the end of, of the 30 years. That's essentially what a mortgage is. You're going to be paying monthly to, to uh, pay off this due amount at the end, and uh, those monthly payments are essentially a sinking fund uh, to come up to that amount. So let's build a sinking fund. A sinking fund is, is simply the future value of an, or, of an ordinary annuity. So before actually calculating the monthly payment, let's define a couple variables that will be handy. The monthly interest rate, we're going to be using that often. That's really this amount right here. That would have made this formula look a lot simpler, 1 plus i quantity raised to the 360th power, and R, which is going to be 1 plus I, that's going to be this part that's inside the parentheses, <clears throat> and that particular 
amount keeps showing up. Now it's easy to write the sinking fund formula. Now that's the future value of an ordinary annuity, but look how that cleans up if we use these uh, variables. So if we re replace each of these with an I, that makes it look a little better. And of course, if we replace the one plus I by R, then the equation becomes this. And all of that has to be equal to that uh, more than a million and a half dollars. Okay, so we're setting up this sinking fund to be able to pay that off. And those payments are going to tell us what that is. So this is going to be, sorry, I had to quick, uh, uh, correct a uh, quick typographical error. Okay, so what we need to do to find out what that monthly payment is, is that we need to solve this equation. On this side, this is just going to be a number that we can calculate, and so we'll divide both sides by this number to find out what the payment is. So let's worry about calculating this value. I'll use a spreadsheet again. In the spreadsheet, we've already created this uh, value i, so let's create the value r is simply uh, equal to uh, 1 uh, plus the i. And so, ooh, hang on. So r is equal to 1 plus i, which is stored up in, in this location. And uh, there's what r is. So now I'm working on calculating this value. That will be easy to do. It's just r raised to the 36th power, 360th power minus 1 divided by i. So this coefficient on the sinking fund can be calculated by looking at r uh, raised to the 360th power minus 1 and all of that divided by i, uh, the i, which is stored right up here. Okay, so there's that coefficient. So there's what the payment's going to be. All that we need to know is what that value is, which we calculated in the spreadsheet. It's this amount. So it's that more than a million and a half dollars divided by this uh, thousand dollars is going to tell us what that payment is. Let's use the uh, uh, spreadsheet to do that calculation. So the pieces of that calculation are already here. There was the amount due in, in uh, 30 years and there's that coefficient. So now we can calculate the payment. So the payment is going to be equal to uh, that amount due in 30 years divided by that coefficient, and there it is. So let's do some rounding on that and put it in. So by watching the flow of the money, if the money just grew for 30 years without any payments, and then setting up a sinking fund over those same 30 years to pay for that off, pay that off, we were able to calculate the monthly payments, which are going to need to be over a thousand dollars. Whoops, a typo error. Let me correct that. I I failed to copy this number correctly. That's the that's what the payment is. Okay, so our monthly payments are sixteen hundred dollars. So now I would like to answer is what is the unpaid balance after 10 years? So let's look at the flow of the money again. So $260,000 grows at 6.25% for 10 years to become, to become this amount, which is just a, a compound interest problem. Notice that there in 10 years, there's 120 periods involved using the notation that we've the variables that we've already invented. We could replace this with that value i, the, inter the monthly interest rate. And the 1 plus i could be replaced by r. And so now we're going to just use uh, the spreadsheet to do this calculation because we've got those pieces in the spreadsheet. 
So at the end of 10 years, the balance due is going to be that principal, the 260,000 uh, times uh, R, and that R needs to be raised to the 120th uh, power. And so there's the balance due. So we've copied that calculation from the spreadsheet and put it over here. Let me put some commas in there. Okay, now I've made just a couple of errors here. The, this isn't the amount, uh, the amount that we owe. This is the amount. This is the amount that two hundred and sixty thousand dollars would become in ten years, if it was earning compound interest of six point two five percent compounded uh, monthly. Okay, so somehow we've got to, uh, we, we want to know how much of that we've paid off with our uh, sinking fund. So using the variables that we've described before, we're doing these monthly payments of about $1,600, and then it will be R raised to the 120th power because there are going to be 120 payments in those 10 years, and uh, there's that that I, which is the monthly interest rate. So we can do that calculation easily on our spreadsheet. So we previously figured out what the $2,600 becomes. Uh, it becomes a big chunk of change, $484,000 and some change. Uh, we want to find out what our payments become, and our payments become this annuity in that 10-year period. So let's do this calculation in our in uh, the spreadsheet. So the thing that, that we've got to do is find our payments, which was this amount, and then we're going to times that by this amount. So what we need here so what we need here in the parentheses is R, which we've already got. We're going to raise that to the 120th power. Then we're going to subtract one from it. And then we're going to divide all of that by I. And that's what our money becomes, what, our, what the payments that we've made becomes. So the $260,000 becomes this amount. This is how much our payments became. And so the balance will be the difference between these two. So we can calculate that balance easily. It's going to be what that money became minus what, what our deposits became. So there's our balance. So our remaining balance is the amount that the $260,000 grows to as compound interest uh, minus the amount that our sinking fund grows to during that same period. And we calculated that answer here. Okay, some typos have been corrected, but here is the amount that uh, the $260,000 becomes. Here's the amount that our payments become to, and so there's still a typo. <laughs> okay, now I think things are right. There's the amount that the $260,000 becomes because it's just a compound interest problem. And there's the amount that our uh, monthly payments become, because that's just a sinking fund. And so we take the, the amount that the 260 becomes and the amount that our payments become and subtract those, and that's the balance that uh, we owe at the end of 10 years. So let's worry about how much interest is paid in the first 10 years. We're so to find the amount of principal that the Jacksons have paid in those first 10 years, we'll take the beginning principal minus the remaining balance, and that's how much principal they've paid, which is the 260000 minus that uh, remaining balance, 219000 we can do this calculation on the spreadsheet. So the principal that's paid in the 10 years is going to be the or original 
principle uh, minus the, uh, uh, where is it, the, the re remaining balance at the end of 10 years. Okay, so there's the amount of principal that we've paid in 10 years. So in that 10 years, all that we've paid off on the principal is $40,000, almost $41,000. So the interest paid in those first 10 years is going to be the total amount that we paid in the 10 years minus the principal paid in those 10 years. And we know how to calculate that. This is the total amount that we've paid and we know the principal paid, we can use the uh, spreadsheet to help us do that calculation. So the total paid in that 10 year period is going to be the 120 payments that we made times the, uh, the, the uh, payments that we made each time. So there, there's our, our total paid in the 10 years and so now so the interest paid in 10 years is going to be the uh, total paid in 10 years minus the principal paid in 10 years. So there's the interest that's paid in 10 years. So wow, look at that. During that 10 year period, we paid $40,000 off from the principal and we paid $151,000 in interest. Okay, so now let's refinance. That is, we're going to go to the bank and borrow money to pay off this, uh, this uh, uh, remaining balance that we've got and uh, re refinance that balance at uh, 4 and 8% uh, compound interest. So the remaining balance from the old mortgage becomes the principal in the new mortgage. And so we need to think about that, uh, that remaining balance and what it will become over 30 years at compounded uh, 4 and an eighth percent interest. So that's simply a matter of using the uh, compound interest formula. Uh, we need to find out what this becomes. Uh, this calculation can be done in R. Now notice it might be nice to define a new I because the interest rate is different now and it might be nice to define a new R because that interest rate is, is different. So now we need to find the payment on that ending balance. Remember that was up here. That ending balance uh, on a mortgage that's charging uh, uh, 4.125% APR. So now these calculations will be much like we did calculations up here, but with a different balance, uh, with a different principle and a different uh, APR. Now all of these formulas were, were calculated based on this principle and this APR. So I should be able to copy all of that information, put it down into the new mortgage information, and then just adjust this balance and this uh, APR. That APR is 0 0.04125, and this principal is really going to be whatever that uh, balance was. So that's pretty cool. I was able to calculate all of the, once I put in this APR and that principle, then all of these other values were calculated based on those. So uh, the uh, amount that we're going to owe in uh, 30 years, if no payments were made, is this amount. That R that we needed was this. That I that we needed is here, there's the coefficient on the sinking fund and the, and the payments are now going to be $1,061 per month. So all that thinking that we are going to do here again to repeat all of that, that those calculations have been done and we can just say what this, uh, this monthly payment is. 
Now that was pretty cool because we were able to just use the spreadsheet. We had done all of those calculations to find the payment at a particular principal and APR. All of these other numbers were calculated based on those two input values. So we could just copy that form, the that part of the spreadsheet, put it down here and find the payment uh, for the new loan. So now we'd like to find uh, how much total interest is paid in this 40-year period. Remember the 10 years on the, f on the first mortgage, then we refinance for another 30 years. So there is 40 years involved in uh, monthly payments. So uh, to, to find out that interest, which is simply the total the, the total interest will be equal to the total payments that we've made minus the principal. So first, let's find the total payments. There were 120 payments made on the first mortgage, and each of those payments were uh, uh, $1,600. And then there were 360 payments made on the second mortgage, and each of those were a, a little over $1,000 each. So we need to find out what that is, and we can use uh, the spreadsheet to help us do that. So the total payments will be 120 times the, the payments on the, the first loan, uh, plus 360 payments times the payments on that uh, second loan. Where was our payment amount there on that second loan? Right there. So. Uh, that's the total amount that we paid. So over that 40 year period for that uh, $260,000 home, we actually paid um, $574,000 plus some change. So that's the total amount that we paid. And so now we need to subtract that principal. So the total we paid minus the principal now now remember we were just trying to pay off that two hundred and sixty thousand dollars we did refinance after a while but it was still that two hundred and sixty dollars that we we're trying to pay off and so over that entire period the interest that we paid is that difference and we can use R to help us calculate that so our total interest is going to be this amount minus the principal, and I think we've got our principal sitting right up there. Uh, oops, it's supposed to be a minus there. <laughs> Let me clean this up just a little bit. It's going to be that amount minus the principal, and the principal is this amount. Hang on, i got to clean up my act. So the total interest is going to be the total of our payments minus the uh, principal. And there we are. That's the total interest. So the total interest that we paid during that 40-year period was more than the original value of the home. That's uh, kind of striking, isn't it? Okay, there's the idea.